Hey, Izzy. Hello, everyone. It looks like everyone's here. Hello. Okay. I'll share my screen and let's get started. Can everyone see that okay? Hopefully it's not too small. Yep. Great. Okay. Let's go through the housekeeping first then. So antitrust notice there. Um, if you go to this link here, you can read the details. Um, you would have heard the announcement already that this meeting is going to be recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, turn your fate and uh, you can turn your video off. Um, yeah, please mute if you, unless you're speaking, and if you have a question, use the raise hands, although being small, we could probably just, uh, small group here, we could probably just um, answer it on the fly. Okay, let's uh, start off with some general announcements. Uh, I don't see anything listed there. Does anyone have any general announcements they want to make? Take that as a note. Um, so moving past that, uh, we do have the roadmap listed here. Um, I don't think there's anything new added to the roadmap um, since we looked at it last time. No, so this the Shanghai upgrade, I think it was like last time we hit in the 23rd. Actually, there's been a least modification. I can't see what it is, but um currently we were focused, we've been focused on the Shanghai upgrade. I don't think there's anything else to talk about in the roadmap right now. There's um, probably been some, on, in terms of Shanghai, um, there's been some detail thing added here to the next upgrade though, um, to, to Beisu, to include the Cancun upgrade. Is there anything anyone want to discuss on the, the roadmap or we can just uh, jump to the rest of the uh, call? Right. Make sure this is the right one. Cool. So we've got the release rotations. Um, see that the, in the con contributor channel, we um, we've just been proposed to eight for March eight for the next release. So I'll just open up this. Uh, this also has the date for the proposed date there. So um, what were people's thoughts on the next release dates? Um, so this last one was a bit later than we had hoped. Uh, so I think this one moves it back to a Wednesday. Um, I think if we did strictly two weeks from this, I think this was a Friday. Um, that wouldn't have uh, that wouldn't have worked with our typical schedule. So that's why that I believe that was moved. Was there, I think Simon, you raised this. Did you get a sense if there was a consensus on um, March 8th being the release date? Uh, everything I've heard so far has been in favour of it. I haven't heard anyone object to it. Okay, well, that sounds promising. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so as far as we know so far, the, the next one will be March 8th. And then from on, so, um, we'll plan to continue doing the two weekly um, releases. For, for the point releases in the 23.1 series. So that's the case. Um, I'll just to add a note there. Yeah, I think we, we basically got till we, more or less the end of this week to make a call because uh, we'd have to start burning it in um, yeah. end of this week. But I, I, yeah, I guess it's probably too late to be any sooner than, than March the 8th. But. Yeah. And I think that the one of the key things we wanted in that ideally would be the um, Gauli Shanghai configuration, if it's available. Yes, I do. And uh, Lisa's is saying we should have the Gauli slot um, decided this week on the all four devs call. So that should work out nicely. Um, so we should know um, 
in the next few days what that uh when Gawley should happen and we'll have enough time to include that in the next um basic release yeah i think it, it probably depends on how the polio goes but yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so, that's so right. a successful rollout we should be able to define Gawley in i mean that's next yeah yeah so fingers crossed so uh so polio works is go, goes well we'll find out in the next few hours um nice segue that though um <laughs> The uh, Shanghai Epic. Um, so I'm, I might just um, open this Epic up. Um, I think you're probably the person to talk to this, uh, Simon. I can see your face there on there. Um, did you want to give a quick update on the how we're going with the with Shanghai um, withdrawals? Sure. Yeah, I'll I'll keep it brief, uh, but feel free to ask any questions. Um, basically, all the kind of main bits of the code are done um the things that are still in progress and still to do are related to uh adding in more tests and in, improving the robustness of um well our test code because there's, there's quite a few different frameworks involved um and yeah we obviously as mentioned on track for the sepolia release in three hours um and yeah should if there's no issues with that should go smoothly with the Gawley one as well there's minimal work to do just just configuration to add in for that um and then hopefully on to mainnet uh so I'm, hopefully by the time we're on mainnet we'll have had all, all the all of these um items in the epic complete and and we'll have all regression tests in place and we'll be in a good place but alongside this there's also uh dev nets running as well as the test nets the public test nets so we should be pretty um confident i think in, if we don't see any problems in that all right that sounds good so what was put in there so I'll... Oh, so ready for And we've got an item here for um, work update on the in protocol deposits by an external contributor. Does anyone have any um, details on? Yeah, I put that one in, in there as well. Um, I wanted to bring this up because it's it's an external contributor, um, the base, which is which is good. Um, it's actually I found out um, they have come in through the Pro Ethereum. Protocol Fellowship, I believe, which is like a kind of mentorship program. Uh, and Mikhail is, is leading this project um, for doing the in protocol deposits that uh, this EIP is part of. Uh, there's another change to do with the execution API as well um, that is a counterpart to this. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so, so Mikhail's driving that and he's also the mentor for this contributor that has opened a PR in Basu. So we're just working through. Um, but it's good that they, I think the mentee was given a choice and chose Basu to like effectively prototype this EIP on, which is really good news, I think. Yeah, it's exciting to see Basu used as a reference implementation for this or early work on this ERP, the ERPs anyway. So. Definitely. It's really good. And also the change itself is really good because it means we can get rid of uh the beacon chain having to like do stuff with the deposit logs and just makes everything work a lot nicer. Unlock some features in basic like post-merge checkpoints in as well for validators. Yeah, definitely. That's good. Um I'm not sure there's much to add to this is probably bring more awareness um but you did have one question here um was uh, any reason not to include this on main using the experimental um experiment eip's time to feature toggle so i guess that's a i'm not sure if we'll necessarily be able to answer it here but um do you want to explain what you're asking there so um yeah so um dano introduced recently i guess driven by some of the eof um changes um uh two new forks that are like 
internal kind of feature toggle forks. There's a future EIP's time and an experimental EIP's time. Future is intended to be um, an upcoming fork, but I guess hasn't got a name yet. So anything that we know is in Cancun can go in Cancun, but anything for the next one would be future. Um, and this experimental one, I guess, is things that haven't been um, agreed to go into a fork yet, but we still might want an implementation for this reason, for example, prototyping. Um, so yeah, it's the first time I think we're including anything in this experimental EIP's time fork. So I um, thought it was worth bringing up and seeing if it was appropriate. Um, and yeah, if anyone had objections to this particular EIP going in there, because it is quite early days for this EIP. I think. It's not going to go in Cancun, apparently. Right. Okay. So we're going to have it for a six months or more, probably. Um, yes. So, yeah. Okay. Did anyone have any thoughts on that? Um, maybe this is the kind of discussion we need to have on the contributors. Um, shall get a few more people's uh, thoughts on it. Uh, it seems like a good use of the experimental um, EIPs. I think that's exactly what it was intended for. But uh, Okay, so no one's going to thoughts here. Maybe we'll just bring it to the wider. We've still got time to win the merge that PR in, so we can get um, have, the, have the discussion on the, um, on the contributors' uh, Discord, Let's see if anyone has any thoughts on that. Thanks. Um, and if, if anyone is up for uh, reviewing this PR as well, the contributor was welcoming some early reviews, even though it's in draft. So. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of see someone doing um, some of these, people doing some of these ERPs for us. Okay. I think that's it as far as work updates. Um, we've got a few items here in the other business. Uh, I think this is your item here, um, Sally, um, on the merge queue. Did you want to um, give an intro of what this is about? And Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is a feature in GitHub that is currently in beta. Uh, I have tested it out in some two other like test repositories. We haven't tested it in Basin yet, but it looks cool. It looks easy to use. It's essentially the same as enabling auto merge, except that like if another PR gets merged in the meantime and you would normally need to merge from main again, it just handles that for you. So it essentially manages any PRs with whether you, where you've hit the button to add it to the queue, it manages it as, it as a queue. Uh, the only real change to how we currently work is that if you want to, so when you set up merge queue, you choose squash commits as like the strategy to merge. Uh, and how we work now is when you hit the auto merge button, you get to edit the commits at that point. So the change would be that if you wanted to squash the commits and edit the message, you would need to do that manually on your PR before you add it to the merge queue. So that's kind of really the only change to the way that we work right now. And so my question is, can we turn it on? Can we try it out? Um, do we, like, we probably don't want to enable it in the middle of doing a release, you know, just in case there are side effects, but maybe after the release, maybe before the release. I don't know. Any objections, any concerns, any questions? So just once this feature is on, everyone, um, this will be the only way to merge with the use me merge queue? Yes, correct. So if you, so it, when you set it up, it's, it's not called enable the merge queue. It's called, do you want PRs to, like, do you require a merge queue? So it just means that, yeah, even if there's only one PR being merged, it will just be merged as a queue. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any objections to it. I think it uh, could help us. Um, maybe less so in our time zone. I haven't had too much of an impact of having to uh, re-merge, but it, certainly at times it had to happen. Um, it looks like Simon just voiced his um, approval of that. Do you have any? Yeah, and I see a thumbs up from Stefan. <laughs> That sounds up on Safari as well. That's good. Awesome. Um, I haven't had any objections. Um, 
like I said, I think that the timing will have to be cached. We don't want to do it just before a release. That would be the only thing I'd, we want to make sure. I think it's a good idea. Um, did you, and you haven't heard any objections in um, Discord at all? No, the only questions were around the squash commits, um, but it just would mean that we, you would want to do that manually in advance. Right. Um, there was a related question, I think, related to that. Um, you think you said that you could actually get it to default the message in the squash commit to the description um, and title. Is that yes. Yeah, so that's another option when you set it up is that when you're squashing commits, you can, so the default, that, which is what we have right now, is it just appends all of the commit messages together. Another option is you have the PR description and I think the sign, like the author's name, and, and that's it. So you could set that up, but then you lose, you lose everything in the commit messages, right? So. Yeah. I'm not hearing any objections to that. I, I think we should. I think you have to go ahead to for that, Sally, for set work at the time. So. Yeah, so maybe tentatively we say after this next release. Yeah. And maybe we just need to write up a little um, uh, blurb on the merge commit piece and how that works. Yeah, and, and if we don't like it, I guess it's easy enough to turn back off. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's still a beta, so there might be problems. Yeah. Okay. And I think the other piece we want to think about, which has come up before, is um, we commonly get merge conflicts in the change log. So I think if we you know, have a sensible ordering in the change log so that we're not always, you know, adding to the last line that should sort of eliminate a lot of conflicts as well. I think that has become better, but um, <laughs> wait and see how it goes in basically. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lucas. You can try it out first, Lucas. <laughs> uh, no, you can do that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, that, that sounds good. Um, this all, um, this all felt good. I'll see. All right, so we've got another item of business here to find a call to remove the base who knows Discord channel. So yeah, I think we did discuss this before actually. I think this was Simon that brought this up previously. Um, yeah, so here you've got, um, you've got, we've got the notes here, thank you. Um, so on December, so that's a few months ago. Um, so we've had some discussion. Um, uh, Simon, would you be able to give a summary of where the discussions got to with the base who knows uh, Discord channel? Sure. Um, uh, the, the discussion was it was kind of old, so I'm kind of bringing it up again, really. But I, I think um, I think there was only one objection from Dano, um, not an objection as such, but more a clarification of of why I think he created the. Two separate channels or, or requested them to be created originally um which was af after the merge um we were getting a lot of support questions and i think he wanted to feel like distinguish between things that were like supporting um how to run a node versus questions about base itself like basic features and things like that um i don't think like in my experience people use the BASU channel and the BASU nodes channel interchangeably. Uh, there was a suggestion to change it to BASU support instead, which is probably more clear than BASU nodes, but I, I still think users would just use both of them. Um, I think they have the same intent, really. Um, it's just that there happened to be quite a bit of noise before, and that's mostly gone away now. Um, so I would, yeah, I would still favour removing basic nodes and just using base and maybe we can split it out again if there's a problem in the future but um but i will uh, since dano gave uh maybe something of an objection before i will ping him specifically on discord to to check that he's okay with that okay so 
Hang on, I'll just put that in there. So it's So there's been no other objections as well um, to removing it from what you're saying. Um, no, no, no. So it's most of the objections. Um, there would, yeah, there would obviously be small deprecation window would be appropriate, I think, um, or at least just making sure that all of the questions have been answered or moved over to the other channel before we actually get rid of it. Okay. Um, so I was brought up an interesting point too that um, there's been much less um, users uh, usage of the um, basic nose channel as well. Right. So yeah, I I can't find the link right now. I I can dig it up, um, but it's basically the insights into in the Discord uh, server, and yeah, at, at the channel level, base do had like I don't know four or five, ten times the traffic by numbers of messages compared to basic nodes. Okay. Which, which I think, you know, supports the view that it was useful initially, but less so now. So, yeah, um, I think you're right there. And if I'm summarizing this correctly, it seems that if there's no objections, then um, the plan would be to give some notice and then deprecate uh, to remove that channel. Yeah, I think so. And I'm happy to, to uh, kind of own that. Okay, great. That's not just. Yeah, um, I think it makes sense to get rid of, like so I said, the. Um, there's not been much usage in that um, people are confused between um, with, um, the two, that channel and the other channel, I think, unfortunately. Um, but I think we need both either at the moment, considering the volume. Yeah, I think that's probably all to say on that one. Um, just... So you're going to follow up on that, um, Simon, with um, with with Dono, and um, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. No, that'd be good to get it out with that other channel. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to discuss? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. I was going to move this. Yeah. And is there anything we want to add to the, the next call that we didn't get a chance to discuss this time, I guess? Uh, we might probably think of that uh, later. In which case, I will stop sharing the screen now. It looks like that's it for the uh, contributors call. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jason. Thanks, Thank you. Lee. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Thanks. See ya. See ya, Jason.